All right, welcome everyone to today's meeting of the GOCC. Today we have Chilean Gao talking about combinatorics of the Pluger map. Before we get started, I want to remind us all of the agreements in our community statement that we are all learning, everyone has something to contribute, and no one has all the answers. Um, feel free to interrupt the speaker with questions and also feel free to put them in the chat. The host will be monitoring the chat. Um, so we can ask the question for you if you don't want to interrupt the speaker. Um, and with that, Julian, take it away. All right. Uh, well, thank you for the introduction. Uh, happy to uh, speak here today at GOCC. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about some combinatorics coming from uh, the Pluker map or uh, the Pluker embedding. Um, this is based on a joint work with uh, Aya Musa and Dao Jifa. Okay, so let's uh, start by talking about the Grassmannian. Okay, so uh, let us consider uh, the space of uh, k-dimensional subspaces of a n-dimensional complex vector space. Um, space of k-dimensional subspaces, let's see. Um, so uh, each point on the Grassmannian uh, be represented by a uh, k-dimensional subspace, or equivalently, we can think of it as a k bound matrix uh, with full rank. Rank equals k. Um, so the uh, Pluker map uh, sends this Grassmannian uh, to the projective space. Here we have n choose k minus one. And our uh, homogeneous coordinates are labeled by our k element subsets of one through n. Okay, um, so uh, each uh, homogeneous coordinate, uh, this what we call the Pluker coordinate, pi, this would be uh, the determinant, uh, let's write it as, as matrix M, uh, the determinant of uh, a submatrix uh, with column index uh, given by I. So we have a K by K uh, submatrix and we take the determinant. Okay, so uh, under this map, uh, of the, uh, we can give the Grassmannian the structure of uh, projective variety uh, at the same time, you know, it's um, the Grassmannian would be defined uh, by something called uh, the Pluker relations. Now, I'll not write down, you know, the precise statement of all of these uh, Pluker relations. Rather, I'll just highlight something uh, that will be uh, important to the talk today. So, uh, all of these Pluker relations would be of the form. Pi times P, Pj equals minus, well, sum over minus one to some power of Pi prime times Pj prime, where these I prime and J primes are obtained by swapping some uh, specific entry, a uh, specific element in I with uh, some arbitrary element in J. Uh, now for example, if we look at the uh, Grassmannian two four, so uh, two planes in uh, C4. There will be uh, one single uh, Pluker relation. So there's one single equation that uh, defines uh, the Grassmannian under the Pluker embedding. And that would be P14 times P23 equals P13 times P P24 minus P12 times P34. Um, okay, so, well, two things that are um, uh, uh, sort of One important. small question, one okay. very yeah. basic question. Uh, what is the determinant of exactly? Oh, okay. So each point uh, on the Grassmannian would be a, a k-dimensional k subspace, right? And mm -hmm. we can represent it as, you know, um, this uh, rank yeah. K 
uh, you know, k by n matrix. Uh, so the mm -hmm. Plucker coordinate would be given by taking the determinant of uh, of this corresponding matrix, um, well, by taking the column uh, label by, uh, well, label by i. So, um, okay. yeah, I mean, like, um, one single Plucker coordinate is uh, it's not exactly a well-defined function on the Grassmannian because you can, you know, change your basis of your k-dimensional subspace, which corresponds to, you know, multiplying on the left by something in GLK, which would, you know, change the determinant. But uh, since we're working in projective space, you know, acting uh, uh, on the left, simul like acting on the left by a something in GLK would just be simultaneously multiply a constant for all your coordinates and, you know, it's the same thing. Okay, uh, any other questions? All right, cool. Um, right, so uh, in general, these uh, Plucker relations uh, will be of degree two and they'll uh, always be uh, homogeneous. So, of degree two. Okay, so, um, okay, so now back to the example for uh, Grassmann and Q4. Um, notice that if we, um, order of, of our indexing sets, so these uh, k-dimensional, uh, sorry, uh, k and subsets of one through n, uh, we would get what we call uh, Young's lattice. Uh, so we would have one, two, one, three, um, two, three, one, four, two, four, oops, one right over here, two, four, and three, four. So this uh, pool set is constructed simply by we order our elements in I from the smallest to the largest, and the partial order is given by pairwise comparison. So uh, here we have um, well, one, two less than one, three, because one is less than one, one and two is less than one, two, three. Um, so notice in our um, single um, Looker relation uh, in Grassmann 2.4 that uh, the only pair that are non comparable, the only pair of two elements subset of 1 to 4, uh, being comparable is given by 2, 3, and 1, 4. And by our relation, we can write it as a um, well, linear combination of ones that are comparable. So uh, what this tells us is that any monomial. Um, in these Plucker coordinates can be written as linear combination of uh, monomials where all PIs are comparable to each other. Now we'll call these uh, the standard monomials. And uh, in fact, these uh, monomials will uh, form a basis, uh, but I'll uh, make precise what uh, forming the basis actually means in a second. Uh, but notice that whenever we have a monomial where all the indices are comparable, uh, we can just simply make it uh, or represent it using a uh, semi-standard Young tableau of rectangular shape. So for example, if we have, uh, let's say P13 times P24, uh, we will simply uh, put our 13 in the first column and 24 in the second column. So being comparable here, equivalent to saying this tableau that uh, we read out by uh, putting columns as our indexing sets is semi-standard. Okay, uh, any questions so far? All right, cool. Uh, so I mentioned something about forming a basis. Uh, let me be precise uh, what that means. 
Okay, so if we look at the coordinate ring of the uh, Grassmannian uh, under this Klukern embedding, uh, this would be our polynomial ring uh, on these Plucker, uh, Plucker coordinates or Plucker variables modeled out by the ideal generated by our Plucker relations. Now, since these Plucker relations are homogeneous, uh, this coordinate ring uh, is graded and we can look at each graded piece. So each of these graded pieces would just be, you know, monomials in this quotient ring of degree D. Um, so uh, by forming a basis, basis, what I mean was that okay, this is a theorem that's up due to Hodge that dates back to, I think, 1943, that uh, the degree D piece uh, of the coordinate ring of Grassmannian as a basis given by uh, or uh, labeled by this semi standard Young type law of shape D by K with entries uh, in one's ring. Okay, so uh, this result has many uh, direct and uh, indirect consequences. Uh, so for example, this allow us to uh, compute the Hilbert series of Grassmannian explicitly, and from which we can uh, answer questions like, you know, what is the degree of the Grassmannian or uh, stuff like that. So we can compute the Hilbert series, um, which is just uh, the generating function on these dimension of our Ds. Um, question. What is yes. n here? Oh, uh, n would be our Grassmannian kn. Oh, the starting n. Okay, the n we started with. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, because our indexing yeah. set would be, uh, you know, a subset of one string. Okay, right. n yeah. and you're yeah, choosing from that. Um, awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so in um, this is also a uh, prototypical example of uh, what we now call uh, standard monomial theory where uh, we actually have uh, this uh, degree D piece being isomorphic to uh, the dual of the uh, irreducible representation of the general linear group um, labeled by this uh, D by K uh, rectangle as a GL rep. Um, and in, well, uh, in the language of uh, Grober basis, uh, the, this theorem by Hodge can be uh, reinterpreted as saying, okay, so we take any linear extension of this uh, Plucker pole set, uh, set. Uh, we consider the degree reflex uh, order. Uh, this is just a total ordering on all the Plucker coordinates, Plucker variables. Then the um, Plucker relation uh, form a Grobran basis, and the initial ideal are given by uh, these pairs P i P j, where i j are not covered. Um, so Plucker relations forms a Grobran basis, and the initial ideal is given by P i P j such that i j not covered. Okay, uh, any question? All right, awesome. So uh, the Grassmannian has a, a very nice decomposition called the Burhat decomposition. Um, so for each, um, you know, K by N full rank matrix, uh, we can, look for the smallest um, indexing set, the smallest i uh, in, oops, in n choose k, uh, such that the Plucker coordinate is not zero. And here by smallest, I mean, uh, what I mean is uh, we take the lexicographically uh, minimum. Okay, so if we, um, so for 
you know, each point on the Grassmannian, there will be a smallest uh, such i. And if we group together these points having the same i, we would get a uh, decomposition of uh, Grassmannian into something called uh, Schubert set. So we have Grassmannian Kn. This is the destroying union over all these i's. Uh, we are uh, this Schubert cell is simply grouping together uh, these points on the grass model. Uh, so uh, we would have cross mining Kn such that, uh, so just to make uh, give a more formal definition, uh, we would have P Pi of M now equals to zero and Pj of M equals zero for all J not greater than or equals to i. Okay, uh, so the Schubert varieties xi, uh, this is defined as the closure of these uh, Schubert cells. Now these Schubert varieties have uh, many, many uh, nice properties. You know, for one thing, uh, this is uh, this gives a stratification of the Grassmannian, meaning that uh, the closure of these Schubert cells are, in fact, uh, destroying union of other Schubert cells. Um, well, geometrically, these um, Schubert varieties are all co-concali with rational singularities, you know, um, and um, they are smooth in their um, uh, on the interior, meaning on these. Um, on the corresponding Schubert cells. And that, um, you know, as sub varieties of Grassmannian, they are defined by uh, Plucker relations and vanishing of uh, these Plucker coordinates. So if we look at the coordinate ring, this is the polynomial ring modeled by the ideal generated by Plucker relations and all of these PJs such that J is not greater than or equals to I. Okay, uh, well, for example, if we have, uh, let's say our indexing I, well, let's say we were still working in cross money two, four, and we set our I to be the two element set to three, then the uh, defining ideal would just be, well, uh, our, single Plucker relation right here, and everything that's not greater or equals to two, three in the Plucker curl set. So we would have one, two, one, three, and one, four. P one, two, P three, P one, four. Okay, so um, we talked about, well, okay. So in this case, the defining ideal are still, uh, given by these uh, homogeneous uh, uh, polynomials. So we can again talk about the uh, each graded piece. And similar to uh, the Grassmannian case, uh, this is again due to Hodge in the same paper that, uh, let me call this R sub i. So the degree d piece of our uh, coordinate ring has a basis given by this semi-standard Young tableau, again, of shape uh, D by K with entries in one through N, uh, such that the, uh, such that all the entries in J row has to be greater than or equals to I sub J, so the uh, J's element in your indexing set I. Um, so for example, if we look at, you know, R2, 3, and let's say we look at the degree 3 piece, uh, this, uh, this would have a basis given by, you know, 2 by 3 uh, uh, semi-standard Young tableau, where the first row has to be greater than or equal to 2, the second row has to be greater than or equal to 3. So in other words, uh, we just want to eliminate all the all these columns where you know your column is not uh, greater than or equal to i. 
uh, and just similar to the Grassmannian case, uh, this uh, degree D piece, you know, as a uh, vector space or as a uh, representation of uh, the broad subgroup, this is a demosorb module. And again, these uh, generators of, um, uh, you know, consisting of Plucker relations and Plucker corners form a group and basis. We have a uh, very simple characterization of what's in the initial IDO and um, what are the standard monomials. Okay, so uh, before I move on to talk about something crazy, uh, any questions? All right, cool. Um, so the Borja decomposition is, um, well, uh, we're, um, we're decomposing our Grassmannian by, you know, looking at our, um, uh, well, finding this uh, lax mean indexing set, we, you know, group things together. But here we are really, um, uh, we're really fixing a total ordering of one through n. Uh, so we're, uh, you know, choosing one less than equals to two, less than equals to three, all the way to n. And that's how we take the lax mean. Now, there could be, you know, different uh, total ordering of one through n. There are, in fact, many of them. So what happens if we uh, take the common refinement of all n factorial uh, Bruja decompositions? So this is something called the GGMS strata. This is common refinement. of n factorial Bruhat uh, decomposition. Well, it turns out that, you know, this is uh, just stand out into something, well, very terrible. Uh, for example, um, it's uh, impossible, well, it's almost, imp it's impossible to uh, label which uh, strata is empty. Uh, in fact, this is uh, equivalent to uh, giving a classification of all realizable matrix. It's feasible to label the non P strata. Um, this is not a stratification of the Grassmannian, meaning that the closure of a particular uh, you know, non empty strata would not be a union of, um, you know, a bunch of other strata. Not a stratification. And thirdly, uh, well, in the case of super varieties, you know, the singularities are nice. Uh, you know, all the singularities are rational. Um, here, essentially, uh, the singularities can be arbitrarily bad. Um, meaning like uh, whatever singularity you may see in like, algebraic geometry, uh, you can find it here. So bad, very, very bad singularities. Okay, uh, and I should probably give some reference here. Uh, this is given by most in 1978. Um, this is a um, uh, result of uh, Gelfan, Gorski, McPherson, Serkinova. So the GGMS, Gorski, um, McPherson, and Serkinova. Uh, this is in 1987. And the uh, singularity statement is due to Minia in 1988. Okay, so. Cheryl? Uh, yes. Um, can you remind us what I think I just got lost? What is the infeasible? Like these statements are being said about the Bruja decomposition. Is that right? Right, okay. So okay. Uh, for each total ordering of one through n, uh, you can get a Bruja decomposition of the Grassmann, right? Now, if you, 
Okay, so that will be saying um, uh, we take the gross money and we break it down into you know different union pieces. Now, if we take the common refinement of all n factorial uh, Bruhat decompositions, right? Uh, then you know there will be uh, well it still a different union of um, the Grassmannian into some pieces. And, uh, you know, these pieces will be, you know, labeled by, well, n factorial many um, uh, k element subsets of one through n. Uh, in fact, uh, like these are, uh, you know, if you're uh, familiar with matrix, this would exactly be uh, your basis uh, of the matrix. And you know uh, the strata being not empty would be equivalent to saying a, a specific matrix being realizable over well here let's say over C uh, or over uh, working over complex numbers and yeah does that answer the question yes yes thank you all right awesome um any other questions all right cool so um, uh, okay. Go ahead. No, I, I can ask this after the talk. It's not like related to this. Oh, yeah, cool. Um, okay, so the question is, you know, are there anything between uh, the Bruja decomposition, you know, something finer than Bruja decomposition, but, you know, not running in, like going into a abyss of um, the GDMS strata? Well, there is. Um, and this is called the positive stratification. Of the gross money. Uh, so the idea is that instead of taking n factorial many uh, Bruja decomposition, take a common refinement, we take precisely n of them. Um, so uh, in terms of the choice of uh, this total ordering on n, uh, we define put it here. Uh, we define this total ordering uh, labeled by some number r. Uh, by having, uh, you know, instead of one as the smallest, we set R to be the smallest. So we goes up all the way to N and we do it cyclically. So N is less than one goes to one and the largest element will be R minus one. Uh, so there will be exactly N uh, total order in this form. And if we take uh, the common refinement uh, of these um, um, and Bruja decompositions, or equivalently, if we take I1 through IN, each of them um, say K element subset of one through N, and each one of them corresponds to the uh, uh, the Schubert cell in you know the different uh, total ordering uh, in a different Bruja decomposition. We have our uh, positive variety. Uh, I'll yeah, let me do J's and let me do a very large J. So the positive rate cell labeled by uh, this N uh, subsets would just be the intersection of our Schubert cell. Uh, over. RN. Uh, but we want to do a cyclic rotation. Uh, so this cyclic rotation simply sends our last column um, in the K by N matrix to the first column. We will have Vn one through V n minus one. All right, um, so the uh, positive variety would just be the closure uh, of these positive cells. Now, uh, like the uh, Schubert varieties and Schubert cells, you know, these, uh, uh, these open uh, positive varieties are uh, smooth and irreducible. These, uh, these uh, closures, you know, these varieties themselves are Cohen Macaulay, they're, you know, they have rational singularities. And moreover, uh, these uh, varieties are again defined by Fluker relations and vanishing of 
um, certain Plucker coordinates. So the, um, so it's coordinate ring is given by um, so vanishing of these pi's such that i is not less than equals to jr under this uh, total ordering uh, where we set r to be the smallest one for some r. Okay, um, so all the, I mean, uh, you know, uh, the, the takeaway here is that, you know, it's, uh, we still have uh, homogeneous uh, polynomials defining these um, uh, posture varieties and we, uh, you know, it's just uh, vanishing of Plucker relations and Plucker coordinates. Okay, so um, now, uh, now a um, uh, similar question we can ask, just like the uh, Schubert case, is that if we look at uh, the degree D piece, uh, is it enough to just say, okay, so we want our, uh, we want, you know, uh, rectangular shape, uh, semi standard Young tableau, and we throw away all these columns that uh, just vanishes, right? So question, can we give um, a uh, description of the standard monomials uh, in the same spirit of a heart, um, similar to heart. Well, so turns out that um, just simply throwing away those um, uh, uh, those columns is not enough. Uh, so, for example, okay, so there. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me uh, first introduce a, um, a subset of uh, a special case of these uh, postural varieties that uh, sort of important um, in our uh, 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 well for this talk. So, a basic interval. Positive variety uh, it's um, so this is a sub variety defined by a interval uh, a b subset n um, and a single rank condition r so we're looking at these matrices such that if we restrict to the column in the interval A through B, uh, we want the rank of the submatrix to be at most R. Okay, so uh, this is in fact a uh, in in instance of uh, posture varieties. And uh, for example, uh, you know, in the Grassmannian 2-4, we could be taking something like, uh, we set our interval to be 2-3, uh, so just two elements. And we want the uh, rank to be at most 1. Now here, um, the defining equations would just be our single Plucker relations and one single Plucker coordinate, P2-3 equals zero. Now let me copy the uh, Plucker relation right here. Oops. Okay. So notice that if we look at the ideal generated by this uh, relation and P2, three equals zero, uh, we would have P1, three times P2, four, equals P12 times P34. So, uh, and in terms of, you know, these semi-standard Young tableau, we would have 
two semi-standard Young tableau that, you know, neither of them have uh, the column uh, two, three, but they're not uh, linearly independent. And um, so uh, if we want to describe uh, what the standard monomial is or uh, what forms the basis uh, uh, for the degree D piece in terms of this uh, tableau, we need more stuff. Okay, so, uh, uh, definition, a uh, generalized anti-diagonal of our rectangular shape uh, is a sequence of entries uh, we want weakly decreasing in columns, uh, strictly decreasing in rows, uh, strictly decreasing. Uh, sorry, strictly, strictly increasing in rows. Uh, so in other words, we want something like, like this, uh, would be a generalized anti-diagonal, but something like this is not. Or um, um, in other words, it's a uh, horizontal strip that's not necessarily uh, um, on the boundary. Okay, so our theorem, uh, this is with Al Musa and Wang. Uh, we showed that, um, uh, if we look at these um, basic interval posture piece, then the standard monomials or uh, things or the spaces of um, the degree D piece the basis given by well, we still have semi-standard on top of this particular shape D by K entries in. But we want to forbid a uh, specific uh, pattern. So uh, we want that uh, there uh, does not exist a generalized anti diagonal with, um, with entries uh, strictly increasing going from the northeast to southwest. Uh, with entries in uh, in our interval a through b of size r plus one, uh, with entries in a b sides equals r plus one and strictly increasing. And I'll give you an example. Uh, so if we look at this basic posture variety. X two three four less one equals two. This is in uh, Rasmanian three five. Then, if we look at the Plucker um, coordinate p one two four times p two three five, the corresponding um, tableau would be would have this form. Ooh, that's terribly written. One, two, four, two, three, five. Uh, so here there will be a uh, generalized anti-diagonal of this form. Uh, the uh, sides equals three, which is two plus one, uh, R plus one in this case. Um, the entries are strictly increasing from going from northeast to southwest, and all the entries are inside our interval. Uh, so this means that uh, this Plucker coordinate p, uh, this monomial p one two four times p two five is not, uh, not in the basis. Okay. Um. I should pause for uh, questions before I move on.
Um, so the generalized anti-diagonal is weakly decreasing in columns and strictly increasing in rows. Yes, weakly decreasing in columns, strictly decreasing in rows. So here, uh, you know, the corresponding column uh, index will be two, two, and one, and the row index mm -hmm. can be one, two, and three. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, there's a, a similar statement uh, for the case where you know the interval instead of being an actual interval in one through n, it wraps around. So something like n minus one, n one, two, three. Um, there'll be a, a very similar statement to this by um, you know instead of looking at you know each of the coordinates and the uh, semi-standard tableau corresponding to it, we take the complement of all these k and subsets. We form the standard uh, semi-standard Young tableau, and we um, uh, have a similar criteria. Okay, so what what's the importance of uh, these uh, these you know very specific um, sub varieties? So these are um, in some sense like analogs of uh, Bygrassmannian permutation, uh, super varieties labeled by Bygrassmannian permutation. So there's uh, you know, one specific uh, rank condition model. And it turns out that um, any positive variety, so any uh, pi j, can be written as uh, intersection of these uh, basic positive varieties. And moreover, uh, the degree, uh, so the standard monomials of our positive variety is in fact the intersection of standard monomials of uh, our uh, each of these basic positive varieties. So if we want to take, uh, want to look at the degree D piece of our coordinate ring for positive variety, we can look at the degree D, uh, you know, these basis of degree D piece of each of these basic positive varieties, and we take the intersection. That forms the basis. Now, in terms of uh, Grobrand basis, uh, the um, okay, so standard monomials equals intersection of standard monomials, and Grobrand basis equals the union of each of the Grobrand bases here. Um, so, um, if we want to know what the basis uh, for uh, so if we want to know anything about our uh, postural variety, uh, it is enough to uh, just study uh, these basic postural varieties lying above. Um, yeah, so knowing uh, the spaces and uh, group of basis of uh, basic postural variety would just um, solve everything uh, you want uh, for uh, arbitrary postural variety. Okay, um, let's see, I have five minutes. Okay, I think I can make it. So there's a, a cyclic group acting on uh, posture varieties uh, given by this chi. So it moves over, uh, moves the uh, last column to the first column. Uh, so in fact, if we take a posture variety, and we uh, do this cyclic rotation. This is again some posture variety. Now, if we look at the um, okay, so this is a cyclic group of order n. Now, there's also a cyclic group of order n acting on this uh, semi centered Young tableau of rectangular shape. Uh, given by uh, something called promotion. Okay, uh, so for example, um, if we look at a um, semi-standard tableau given by let's say one, two, four, two, three, five. Uh, so uh, this the process of promotion would be okay. So. The first step will change all the ones to a black bullet point. 
two, two, three, four, five. And now we uh, apply uh, genetic slide uh, to uh, to this tableau. So a genetic slide would be a local move on these black dots where uh, we look at the entries immediately to the right and immediately below it. Uh, so we want to swap this black dot with one of these entries so that uh, the tableau is still semi-standing. So each column is still uh, strictly increasing, each row is weakly increasing. So here we would uh, uh, swap the dot with the two below it. We'll get two, two, dot, three, dot, five. This will go to two, two, three, dot, four, five, which will change to three, five, four, dot. So now that uh, there's uh, nowhere, uh, no other slides uh, we can do for this dot, um, let's just change that into a, oh, I should be saying that we're working in cross minus three, five, so n equals five. Uh, so now let's change the dot into a six, uh, which is n plus one, and we subtract one from everything. Uh, this will give us one, one, two, four, Three five, uh, and so, so going from uh here to here, this is one step uh in promotion. If you do this n times, uh, you would in fact get get back to where you started. So you have a cyclic group of order n acting on these uh semi standard tableau. Um. Now, yeah, I I should just generally know this, but. When you do promotion, what does the does the dot always change to max n plus one or uh yeah is it you, maximum you plus one? Change that to n plus one. Okay, n plus one. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um. All right. Um. Any other questions? All right. Uh, let me just state the theorem. So. Uh, our theorem is that promotion gives a bijection between uh, standard monomials of a positive variety and its cyclic shape. And let's just say chi of pi j. Um, all right, looks like I'm running out of time, so I'll just stop here. So I'll thank our speaker. And are there any questions? I have a question. Is there a connection with the notion of positroid you presented as the uh, subset of the Grassmannian whose Pluker of, of points, whose Pluker coordinates are all non negative? Yeah, that's a very, very nice question. So this. Um... This actually comes from uh, the study of uh, totally non-negative part of Grassmannian. Uh, so, um, uh, okay, so the totally non-negative part of Grassmannian would just be these uh, points where, well, uh, all the Plucker coordinates are of the same sign. Um, so um, if you look at this part of Grassmannian and you look at this uh, uh, GGMS strata or matrix strata, on that part of Grassmannian, uh, the non-empty stratas are exactly these positroids. Um, and that's actually where the name comes from. Uh, like, uh, so uh, posi as in positive and uh, choid as in matroid. Excuse me, can you say the, the non-what strata? I, I missed the non-empty, the, the non-empty strata. Non-empty, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, if you uh, restrict your, you know, like 
may try realization problem to this uh, totally non-negative part of Grassmannian, you would exactly get uh, these positive traits. Um, yeah, so uh, that is uh, worked down by Posnikov back in 2006. Uh, so we can uh, really think of those as, um, you know, uh, positive traits over the reals. So here, um, these positive varieties defined by, oh, I, uh, I can't believe, uh, I, I sh should have mentioned that. Okay, so these positive varieties are defined by Knudsen, Lamb, and Spire in 2013, 2014. We can think of them as, you know, these positive varieties over the complex numbers. And there are recent work by Galashian and Lamb where they look at these, um, well, they look at the point counts. So uh, looking at positive traits over uh, finite fields. Um, any other questions? If uh, I have, okay. So I had a question about the previous thing where the, let's see. Um, so we were considering these semi-standard, yeah. So for the R sub D, okay. Uh, so you have a basis, which is given by a semi-standard young tableau, but you have like a minimum elements in each row, right? Oh, um, like I think right here, right? Are, uh, yes, that one. Uh -huh. Is there a nice tweak to like the hook content formula that you can use to count these? Uh, sorry, is there a nice what? So is there like a nice formula that you have to count these? Right. I mean, you don't even probably need the hook content for this. It might actually be easier. Yeah. Like, is um, there a nice right? I think there should be. Um, I mean, these things correspond to like, uh, like flag short polynomials where you uh, mm -hmm. set all, you know, all the, um, um, you know, all the variables equals to variables one. to one yeah 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 and but like um uh, yeah and is it explicitly is it known i think there should be some like determinantal formula for that but um he, yeah uh i'm not 100 percent sure I, I have to check okay uh, but there yeah. should be yeah there should be okay okay yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a question as well, which was, uh, just at the end, you just kind of had to state your theorem. And I was wondering if you could give kind of a flavor of the proof, because I've seen a couple different, I don't know if it's precisely this, but looking at promotion as a cyclic action and showing how it relates to other cyclic actions. And so... I'm just curious what, if there was a good flavor to this or if it's mostly technical. Um, it, it's actually quite, uh, it's actually not that hard. Okay. Um, okay, so we have, so we have a positive variety. Uh, this is, you know, intersection of a bunch of basic ones. Uh, so each basic, um, you know, Posture, uh, well, basic posture variety would give us this sort of uh, forbidden um, configuration of these uh, generalized anti diagonal. Mm -hmm. So, what we showed is that, you know, under um, promotion, this diagonal is preserved. Uh, so, okay. if you have a, you know, generalized anti diagonal of that form, you do promotion, well, like, you know, um, you subtract one at the end. So, your entries would go from, you know, being in. A to B to A minus one through B minus one. Right. Um, but there will be a uh, antidiagonal that's preserved. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's not a standard monomial here, even only if it's not a standard monomial there. Okay. Yeah. 
And that, that just tells you that, that it's truly, it's like promotion is truly an action on this set. It doesn't give you any other properties, right? Just it is like, right. it, it is a cyclic action on this set, but it doesn't tell you exactly what's being sent to what. Um, uh, what do you mean by, um, like sending what to what? And so, so the fact that it promotion, you know, preserves this anti dag like preserves anti diagonals or whatnot, will tell you that it is closed you know, under not having one of these anti-diagonals. Mm -hmm. um, but, and so that will tell you that it's a true group action because promotion will eventually get back to where you started. That's, um, but it doesn't tell you, like, if you, the flavor you gave is just like, feels like it proves that this is a group action, but it doesn't tell you what the group action is doing, just that it is sending good tableaus to good tableaus. Um, I, I wonder if you're asking about uh, to characterize the orbits. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, okay. I yeah, so we've thought about this. Thank you, Seth. Um, yeah, okay. So, um, so we can specific, like we can explicitly write down these uh, indexing sets uh, for you know the um, posture variety versus its uh, cyclic shift, right? Um, so you know this cyclic shifting is you know something purely geometric, um, and um, you can definitely. Um, um, like okay, so the group orbit could be you know smaller than n, right? And you can definitely see um, um, okay, uh, you can see some uh, necessary condition on uh, you know your indexing set that uh for you know a specific standard binomial to have you know a, a smaller group uh sm smaller orbit size. Uh, but that's not enough to characterize. Um, um, let's say, okay. Um, okay, let, let me be precise of uh, what exactly do I mean. Okay, so uh, you have, okay, so you have all, uh, let's say you fix you fix your degree D, uh, you fix your cross minus K, and uh, you have the set of all semi of uh this rectangular shape, right? Now, what positive stratification does is that, uh, uh, you know, on this uh, on this standard binomial level, is that uh, you can um, partition all these semi-standard Young tableau um, to like correspond to these uh, positive traits, uh, meaning that, um, so for each standard for each standard monomial, you can actually talk about what is the smallest posture variety that has that monomial as a standard monomial. And you put those together. That would be a partition of all these standard standard Young tableau. Um, and um, so, yeah, and um, promotion would send, you know, a, uh, a, a standard monomial that, you know, belongs to, let's say, posture variety to a standard monomial that belongs to you know, it's cyclic shift. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so one necessary condition would be, you know, if you're, if you want your uh, semi standard Young tableau to have a smaller group orbit, um, uh, you know, let's say, of, let's say of size n, n over the two, right? Then your posture variety would have to have uh, this uh, n over two symmetry where you rotate. Uh, mm -hmm. And over two times, it has to go back to uh, the original posture variety, but that's not sufficient to characterize um, the orbit size. Okay. Um, yeah, we thought. Uh, well, we've thought a little bit about that, but uh, you know, try to throw in more conditions, but uh, it doesn't 
really help. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, does that sort of answers um, yeah. what you're thinking about? Yeah, OK, awesome. Oh, excuse me if I'm a bit you know, I'm I'm confused. Does does uh promotion correspond to one cyclic shift or not? Yes. Yes. Okay. It does. Ah, it does. Oh, cool. Well. It does. Um. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Like. You know, on the set of standard monomials, it does, but not you know on like. Uh, it doesn't go as fine as you know looking at specific you know one monomials and see you know if the group orbits are the same. I mean, a, a cyclic shift of the uh, n columns, you know, of the uh, of the matrix. Right. So, I mean, uh, so of these columns, uh, that's an uh, action on the Grassmannian, uh, not exactly an action on the standard monomials. Um, so, yeah, so if you look at this action, you look at, you know, a sub variety of Grassmannian, and yeah, you can talk about uh, its standard monomials, but it doesn't quite make sense to talk about, um, you know, how this action acts on one specific standard monomial. All right, let's thank our speaker one more time. We'll stop the recording here.